Walk around the compound, see some tigers, and then maybe see some peats, and hopefully hear some squeaks. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Do you know the way? Do you know the way? You? Do you? Do you know the way? Hi. Mm. Hi. How are you, baby? Babies. <laughs> it's Naya. And that's as Shanti. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh boy. Hi. Hey guys. <laughs> Hello, all you big cat lovers out there. See, that's so much better. <laughs> Hello, all you big cat lovers out there. It's me, Derek, again. Welcome to another super, a duper fantastic episode of the Walk Around the Compound webcast. Go ahead and hit that like and that subscribe button. You know, YouTube stuff just kind of really, it just, you know, helps out the, helps out things. It just does. Oh, it's a real help. You can either hit that subscribe button or you can just help take out the trash. Either way, it'd just be a big help, you know? Just kind of contribute. Ooh. Look at the color contrast that we've got working with us today. We've got light and dark. We've got the dichotomy. Almost as if it's this, uh, uh, representative, uh, uh metaphor. There we go. Oh boy, a metaphor. The duality of tag. Am I Dorbs or am I full of murder? The double-sided coin, the question, the stinky faces. We get down to the bottom of these things, scrape the bottom to find the truth. Here on the walk around the compound webcast, we are truth seekers. It's what we do. You know it. I know it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know where any of this is coming from. I never do. It's. It's like I just I just tap into just a a different plane of existence, you know, where it's just a, it's like the webcast wavelength in that alternate reality is just it's like the air you breathe. It's like everyone is just on the same page. And then I bring it to this plane. I show you a little bit. I'm like an interdimensional traveler. Look who's back. Guess who's back? Ace is back. In his closure. Hand of his. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Squeak, a squeak, a squeak, a squeak, a squeak, a squeak. <laughs> Pro teens. Ugh. I know. So hack, right? It is. You just, you're just grabbing at things. Like, can you come up with some new references, Derek? Can you come up with some new ones? How long you been doing this stuff, huh? How long? It's been long, long time. But they're the tried and true references, Derek. You can't just get rid of peds and squeaks and proteins. But what if I ever want to just try to branch out a little bit? You know, what if I ever want to just try to do something else? Try to not necessarily go like away, but just try to do something different alongside of the stuff I already do. But then, of course, I'm going to beat the peds and squeaks guy. How are you going to take that seriously? You don't. That's how it happens. Oh, you got opinions on stuff? Why aren't you the Pete and Squeeze guy? I don't know why. I don't know why I have to be critiquing 
of this stuff and in a in a pseudo effeminate uh, southern accent I don't, I don't understand that oh oh you know this morning just drank, drank some coffee it was great i feel good <laughs> oh you never know what's what what flavor of derek are we gonna get today is it gonna be sleepy salty derek is it going to be bouncy manic derek who knows oh, oh my gosh it's like i'm at baskin robbins or something like that jeez but i don't get to choose the flavors they just kind of get chosen for me yeah and then there's just that and then scoops of ice cream are just thrown at me just angrily <laughs> ah, ah, i didn't i didn't ask for this well you got it anyway hey raven look at you look at you i remember that was like a big thing my old uh, music teacher, Mr. Stimkey, or Steamkey, um, you know, like trying to enunciate, uh, enunciate your words when you're singing. And he would hear people like if there was something where like the the T sound was the end of the of the word, and then. You know, the, like you or Y or, or whatever was the beginning of the next word. Oftentimes, it's easy to default, default to that, you know, that chew thing. Bless you, bless you, whoever that was. Like, uh, for instance, for example, the uh, Beatles. I want you. Uh huh. Yeah, I want you so bad, hey, and it's like, well, you want some Skull or you want some Copenhagen? <laughs> uh, that was not my joke, I took that from my friend Ryan, my buddy Ryan Seymour, he said that, it was a reference to a joke that he made, we were at his house, it was back in high school, and we like, yeah, chew, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beetles. Hi, baby. But, so it's like, no, you have to, and uh, whenever you're doing like that kind of like, that very choral, choralistic, you know, proper chorus type uh, singing, you have to make sure that you're using the proper pronunci pronunciation, enunciation, a vocal timbre. So then, I want, I want you so bad. <laughs> but then, so you get, that's the thing, and you'll, you'll, you can see this, like sometimes, and I've seen this on, uh, you know, like those uh, voice show, like The Voice or like an American Idol equivalent or X Factor or whatever it is. Sometimes you'll see people, and they're trying to sing, you know, like a pop, like a pop song, a pop kind of thing. But you can tell that they're using. They were very specifically trained in that manner, and it sounds. It just sounds bizarre. It just sounds strange using certain that like that enunciation like a lot of times it's like it's very good you know for uh you know like that kind of uh, symphonic con concert kind of thing or or maybe even like certain types of jazz or there's certain uh technical girls 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 oh my gosh no oh, oh the pa oh the pandemonium there's, there's pandas so this is what band this is what pandas do Anyway, wah, Woo. So that's the thing that can happen. And like trying to find the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the balance between, when you're singing, the balance between technical proficiency and the actual feel, the emotion. Which oftentimes when you're focusing on the technical elements of it, you lose, you lose the feeling. You can, or you can. 
uh, I, I don't think that's not true because I listened to uh, Pavarotti. Uh, it's just like that's a different, <laughs> it's a different kind of thing. It's a different kind of thing and different styles. And so of course I'm gonna get like the, I'm gonna get the choir nerds commenting like actually, like, uh, actually that's a little bit different. You the way they're trying to threading. Uh, the way that singers now, and like what is popular, it shouldn't be popular. <laughs> oh man, oh, you know, it's like, like band kids and choir kids are just some of the most just delusional, <laughs> pompous and pretentious, you know, people as far as music, because like they just will crap, they will crap on music, oh, just like, you know, like, it's honestly the chord changes of that new popular song. Anyone could do them. And it's like, that's sometimes it's not the point. Like, coming up with some, coming up with unique sounds and coming up with unique, um, you know, I guess, like, uh, you could call them, like, audio memes, I guess, in a way. There is a talent to that. And sometimes, like, yeah, when you get into, like, the realm of pop, it's also, you have to add in... The element of style, the element of attitude, the element of just the overall vibe and the feel of it, which goes into this whole kind of package deal of, of uh, presentation and entertainment and art. Uh, you know, that um, honestly, Lady Gaga doesn't uh, enunciate her T's. And I learned how to do that when I was a freshman. I'm better than Lady Gaga. <laughs> That's like kind of the, you know, they, they're not just, they're not like trained. I don't know why they're famous. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. I, it's, it can get, it can get kind of just like, okay. <laughs> okay. I remember like my, oh my gosh. And I love, and here's the thing. And I, I'm not going to say that there's not like a certain degree of validity to the argument. I'm not going to say that there's not like a lot of crap out there. And I'm not going to say that sometimes people, they, they kind of dumb down their musical taste. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that because before, before the band nerds get here and descend on my page, just hold your horses. Let me kind of complete some thoughts here. But, uh, uh, oh crap, I kind of went on a sidetrack and I forgot the other thought that I was going to try to complete. Ah, oh, jeez, let me pause this for a second. Look at Peek. Oh, he was peeking. Chompers was peeking. I, uh, I remember what I was going to talk about. Because I was going to talk about, uh, um, I was going to talk about my boy, Steam Key. My guy. I love him. Oh, love that guy. He taught me so much about uh, just music and uh, performing and, and whatnot. Um, both musically and dramatically. I mean, like, I one of he's probably my favorite teacher of all time. He's what high school teacher that I had. Um, and, uh, yeah, he, used to, he was a pretty, very musically talented individual. He did a lot of kind of, he did a lot of progressive rock uh, back in the 70s. So... That's, again, like progressive rock guys, just extraordinarily technically proficient. And it was like a lot of times about just like, you know, elves and gargoyles and crap like that song. Yeah. And doing it wrong, like a lot of progressive rock. A lot of progressive rock. But, it, you know... I will say, I'm not going to say that sometimes it didn't seem like it was a little bit self-indulgent. <laughs> look, at, look at the amount of notes that we can play so fastly. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I still find, I still find this stuff very enjoyable. But I remember, like, he would just vehemently, vehemently... He would just crap all over like the stones, like the Rolling Stones. He's like, I can't listen to the Rolling Stones. And even in high school, I'm like, what? Well, why? They're an awesome band. They're amazing. He's like, I cannot listen. Every, like, there, you will find almost every single song 
in the Rolling Stones catalog has at least one thing, whether it be someone's voice, someone's instrument, something is out of tune. And I can't do it. <laughs> I'm just like, aren't we getting a little bit nitpicky? And also, isn't that kind of like a stylistic choice as well? You don't think that they don't know or notice? Uh, and he's like, I just can't do it. And like, I, you know, he stuck to his gun, so I have to respect that. Have to respect that. And yes, no, look, I'm going to say, like the stones, the stones, I would definitely say as far as just like, well, you know, they probably, you know, didn't have the ability to uh, do a 57, 33 and a half time signature, you know, like, uh, like Ingwe Maelstrom or whatever the heck the guitar guy is, <laughs> but, but they were amazing just at creating like just visual style and, and like the, the musically, music like soundscapes, I will say. And that in and of itself, there's a technical aspect to that, technical aspect to that, which I think has to be kind of, I lump it in in the whole kind of, the whole the whole package, the package. Check it out, check out that package. <laughs> Stinky face. So there's like, of course, there's plenty of opportunities where, um, you know, like we would just talk about music and certain types of music. What about this? Crap. What about that? Crap. <laughs> Mr. Stinky just never, he never held back. It's like, that sucks. And he, like, he would, he would give his reasons. That's the thing. He would back it up. He would give his reasons. And it's like, look, I'm the guy, because he was really perfect. He's very good. He's a piano guy. Uh, he, uh, he played bass, guitar very well. I mean, he, he was able to lead, uh, you know, like high school vocal jazz, uh, ensemble groups, uh, to go and sing in Carnegie Hall multiple times. That's the kind of musical chops that this guy has. That's, he was a very impressive individual. But, uh, you know. And that was very impressionable. Because I, I like the Rolling Stones, and then of course at the time, I would listen to him. I would listen to his anti-Rolling Stone rhetoric, and I was I was actually drinking a little bit of the Kool-Aid. I'm like, you know what? Maybe he's right. And, I would t and this is the thing. I remember this very specifically. I remember this very specifically. And I, he was saying just like, well, this is why the Rolling Stones are not good. I remember my folks, told, t they took me to see the Rolling Stones, Bridges to Babylon tour back in 1997, and it blew my mind. I loved it. It was amazing. I was exposed to just this whole, a whole new world of classic rock <laughs> but of course you know it was uh, the logical underpinnings of my of my love of these things were, were uh, put into question by Mr. Steamkey and then I brought some of those things home and I said like well you know the Rolling Stones they they did do this and I would kind of regurgitate some of the facts that he would say and I would say them to my dad and my dad was like you know what Mr. Steamkey doesn't know everything about music <laughs> He was, he, he was, uh, he was, cause that's the thing, like, oh man, it was like my dad's, it was my dad's music, like he, um, he was a young man, like in the 60s, like he was in his, uh, he was in his, uh, 20s, you know, so he got to see all that stuff, he got to see all that stuff. I ain't talking about music. Music's fine. Music's fine. Hi, bud. Hi, bud, bud, bud. I was, uh, because I was, I was thinking yesterday about music and I was thinking about, um, I guess, like, different bands that have, like, very strong followings. May not necessarily be, like, the biggest followings, but they're just, they're very, very strong, very powerful. And there, it's like, there's some bands where I get it. There's some bands where I guess you could say that it's not my cup of tea, but I still can recognize the fact that they're talented. And then there's some where I'm just like, I don't know how much I really kind of understand that. I'm thinking of bands like, you know, like Pearl Jam. Just they, they have a, just a dedicated loyal following. Uh, or guys like Bruce Springsteen. Um, for a long time, like bands like Tool. 
maybe the red hot chili peppers. Kinda sort, kinda sorta to a certain degree. Kinda, kinda sorta. Maybe I shouldn't lump them into the same kind of thing because what I'm talking about are like, they have this, these ultra, ultra fans. I mean, there's people who, they literally go, they've been to between like two and 300 Bruce Springsteen shows. They're just, they're just, that's an insane degree. Like Heidi's a big Bruce fan. Big time Bruce fan. Oh boy. And I guess that's one of those things where uh, I wouldn't call Bruce exactly my cup of tea, but I, I do get, I do. I think because it, it, I do understand like the resonance, the, it speaks to a lot of people. And I mean, it's like, yeah, it's kind of, it's just, it, it's like, there's so many, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Zuba lubes. Zuba lubes. Never fails. Never fails. Hi, bud. Well, just took things to PG-13sville. <laughs> But yeah, Bruce, I, I can understand what Bruce is like really yeah. speaks to a, a large number, uh, speaks to a significant segment of the population, you know, like the working class individuals, like the blue collar folks that carry, maybe the, the folks that carry a lunch pail. <laughs> and it's like so much of the same, it really is. It's like the same stuff, same kind of base, the same key structures and, um, you know, but, I, but here's the thing, like the E Street Band, and, I'm not, they, they actually do, they can rock out and they can play their instruments very well, but it's just, it's a, it's very kind of formulaic, but I think it's okay, I think that's fine, like Johnny Cash was formulaic, but he was a, he was a, I thought the guy, he's a genius, he's a master, masterful, at that kind of thing, maybe Mr. Steamkey might not like, well, you know, he only knew three chords, and I'm like, okay, Mr. Steamkey, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe if Johnny Cash is, you know, maybe if uh, Folsom Prison kind of started off with I hear the train coming <laughs> Okay, Mr. Stimkey, that's how I would have done it And I'm like, ah, oh, that's that sounds great Ah, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but uh, gosh, you know, yeah, and like Heidi loves Bruce, loves, and uh, I, it, but it's the same. It's a lot of the very same stuff, you know. Just uh, I, <laughs> it was a mining town that had some miners' frowns, a bunch of miners in the town. They did the best for their families in the mining town. <laughs> it's, it's like this. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. They worked real hard in the mining town. They went to the bar after they got out of the mine. <laughs> it's always like telling a story. Telling a story. They tried their best to give their families the best the miner could do. <laughs> you know? Uh, and then, but but it, that speaks to people. It really does. And I guess because it's also like Bruce, like just him himself seems just, just, just tremendously genuine. He's just, he seems like he actually cares about like the subject matter. So, you know. Like, I, you know, like, I had a lot of friends who were, like, really into Tool. They were, like, so into Tool. And that was another one of those bands where, hi, baby, okay, you're crazy. She's got pants on. She's got pants on. Hi. Hey. Okay. Um... And it's one of those things where it's like, I, Tool wasn't exactly my cup of tea, but I could, I could see the technical aspects of it, and I could respect it. I could respect it, even though it's like, I, but they were just like, Tool, and we're going to go and see, oh, we're going to go see four shows this summer. 
Awesome! Maynard! Maynard! <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, no, it's cool. And it's like, that's kind of the, that's Tool. It's like every, it's all, it's like every Tool song. Okay. Got it. <laughs> um, I guess probably the one that I get the most is maybe like the, like that kind of Pearl Jam kind of thing. The ones I, I have, to, it's like, okay, that's your thing. Maybe I just, it does, it certainly, I don't know, like the jam band type stuff, the, the jammy, the jammy things. It, that, that. Because it's about the party, man. You just go in there, it's about the, it's like, I understand. But what about songs? Songs with like a beginning and an end. <laughs> uh, no, it's. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go to the Grateful Dead show. I sold. Uh, I'm selling some spaghetti in the parking lot so I can pay for tickets to the next Grateful Dead show. I'm like, cool. <laughs> uh, but that that's look. That's your thing. That's your thing. That's cool. That's all right. It's just I that that was just like eh, it's like okay. And like I can I can absolutely recognize the talent, like the, the technical skill and the talent of these musicians. But it's just that stuff just didn't kinda I don't know, didn't speak to me. And I, you know, because everyone's gonna go in there, but what about this band and this band and this band? And this, it's like I think there's a certain type of band. It's it's the band or the musician, and like they they have a specific kind of kind of following or, or they, they they they've been kind of rocking it out for so long and they've they've kind of really built their fan base like so like in like deeply from the ground up and it's it's just it's different it's different well what about this band and it, I, there's gonna be a lot of that you know I think that this band probably has the same kind of and there's a lot of it where you're gonna say things in the comment section and I'm gonna be like, I don't know about that <laughs> Do they? <laughs> does they? Uh, it does. No, maybe they sell a lot of tickets. You might have like people who sell a lot of tickets, but it's there's a there's a different kind of. I'm looking for like a different type of thing, like people who have been just doing it for like a lot of times. It's like you have to have been a musician for a long time, and your fan base has had to have survived for that long time. So like Bruce was selling out like arenas back in the 70s. He's still selling out arenas 40 years later. And like it's never dwindled. Like that's it's and and that's the thing. And people will just go and go and go and go. Like that's that's kind of what I'm talking about, you know. Um like other ones that I'm, uh yeah, I'm going to probably piss off a lot of people. But, like, I am not a Dave Matthews Pan fan. I am not. It just... And then they're just like, yeah, we're just like really... We're kind of like some... We're hip. We're like pretty hip guys. But, of course, you know, you can tell that, like, we're just kind of multicultural and progressive and everything. But at the same time, sometimes we're kind of... Sometimes I go like... And then there's some so, like, you know, there's a little bit of attitude there kind of thing. So maybe kind of like... We're also kind of like tough guys in a little way. But at the same time, look, look we all just like kind of do a music, like our instruments. Like how technically proficient we are at our instruments. And it, it's just... I'm like, I can't. I just can't. I can't. If some people are probably like, all right, well, that's the webcast for me. I'm done. Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel about Dave Matthews' band. <laughs> and that's another one. They have a huge, they have like a huge, like very, very dedicated following. Very dedicated following. And I have to admit, they're very, they, I can't say that they're not, they suck. I'm like, okay, you play instruments like they do. Like that, I, I'm not going to say that they suck. I just really don't like, I, don't, I can't say that there's not a couple of tunes. Yeah, sure, when they, okay, they, I can tap my toe to a little bit. After a while, it's just like, ah, I just can't. I, uh, 
Open up my head, let me how 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 many hey I ah I don't know. <laughs> oh, one guy's got a fiddle. <laughs> Some people are like, I I really like Dave Matthews Derek, and I really don't appreciate I don't appreciate this hot take that you're having right now. And meanwhile, other people are gonna be like, yes. Someone said it. It's and it's hard to articulate. It kind of is. Like, what about that? Is just kind of. It just is kind of annoying. It's not that I. Hate, I don't hate them. And I, I. I think that they. It's one of those things. Like, I have no problem with them. Like achieving like the degree of success that they have because obviously there's a lot of people that like it. I don't think that they're dumb and I don't think that they're bad musicians. I just don't like it. I don't like it. So I'm not going to be one of those things like they shouldn't have the fans and the following that they should have. Or I'm not even going to say that they suck because they don't. It's just like, ugh, I just don't, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's one of those things that's hard to articulate. It's just kind of hard to accurately put into words. But, you know, there it is. That's just kind of the, kind of how I feel. <laughs> All right. I think that that was probably a good, a good bit of a casting. I, uh, I hope you liked it. I think it was fun. I... There you go. He was a tiger rancher. He ranched them stripes. He made sure they had enough food. He did his best for the tigers at the tiger ranch. <laughs> oh, oh man, this song really speaks to me. You know, someone gets it. So we really work hard, but sometimes we just don't get noticed. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'll talk to you folks later. Bye-bye.